Great. You know what? I should have taken, I'm in the car again and it's hot. So I'm going to, sorry, I have to get undressed a little bit. Um, <laughs> wedding. It's not supposed to be hot, but of course today, what, for whatever reason it is. So we are going to talk today about horses and how we can help support horses and how horses help support us how they support our classes, how they support us as humans, and um, and just what a beautiful experience it is when you can share our practice with horses. Um, yay, Kelly, we can see you, yay. So uh, I'm gonna put everybody on mute just so we can uh, get rid of the background sounds. Oh, Jamie, I didn't, I need to make you co-host. Um, so, when we talk about horses, we have to remember that horses are incredibly ancient beings. Um, I think that they they tra have traced them back as far as 45 million years ago, maybe up to 55 million years ago. And they've been domesticated. I think there's large spread evidence of domestication as far back as 3000 BC. So they've been a part of our world, our human experience for a very, very long time. And they have helped us build nations. They've helped farmers farm. They've helped us get from one point to the next. I mean, before mechanics, before steam engines, before anything, there were horses that were getting us to where we needed to be. And of course, the horses were big in the wars. They helped us in all the many different wars that we have been in horses have been there. So um, I wanted to talk, and Jamie wants to talk a little bit about that power of horses. You know, it's interesting because we talk about, hello, Sharice, hello, Kelly, hello, Gabby and Diane. Thank you so much for joining us. We're talking about horses today. And we're talking about just how incredible they are and how much they've brought to our civilization and to us. But the difference is, you know, horses, they bring so much and we see, use them now like in equestrian race horsing for pleasure. Um, still, some people might use them for farming, but yet they aren't treated with the urgency for rescuing as much as dogs and cats are. And their plight is almost more serious because for one, a lot of times we have feed lots in America so what that means is we don't eat horse meat, but what we will do is we will gather horses, put them on feedlots, most of the time starve them, give them without any water or food, or if they get some water and food, it's barely enough. And then we ship them to Mexico or Canada where they do eat um, meat. And I know that I don't know so much about in Canada, but I do know in Mexico, there have been cases where the horses, they want to keep them subdued so they'll stab them as they come off the truck. And they don't put them in nice fancy trucks that they do if they're carting them from like equestrian events or um, race events or whatever, or rodeos or whatever that is. They put them in huge cattle trucks. So a lot of times when they get to where they are, they have broken legs, um, you know, broken bones. They've been fighting, fighting. It, it's a really ugly situation, but we're not here to talk about so much the ugliness. But I just wanted to share with you, their, their plight is pretty deep. And so, of course, we, we go to cats and dogs always because we see humane society and we know there's shelters everywhere. There aren't a lot of horse rescues out there. But the horse rescues that are out there, um, they are doing really good work. And I know one that is near and dear to my heart is the Return to Freedom, where she is rescuing the wild Mustangs. I know that Pregnant Mare Rescue also rescued the wild Mustangs. There's a few rescues that are out there doing that. The importance of rescuing the wild Mustangs is because the wild Mustangs are literally a national treasure. So some of their bloodlines date back 300 years. And when they get rounded up, their bloodlines get mixed. Um, they don't separate the, the different tribes and herds, they mix them. So we're weeding out those really beautiful, strong bloodlines that came here 300 years ago. And so at Return to Freedom, they try to keep the horses separated and keep those bloodlines as pure as possible. And so I share this with you. 
this is a little background about horses, how amazing they are and how much they really need our focus, our attention and our support through our beautiful practice, right? So we have this beautiful practice. It's very easy, as, easy for us to share distantly um, when we support horses. So I have um, some short stories I wanna share, but I wanna turn it over to Jamie to add anything she wants to add to that intro. Yeah, and I just would bring up, you know, um, some of the ways animals are used. I think it's because people see them just as they do, you know, large animals, they're not like the cute puppy or the kitten. They're like, they put them in the category of the cow and, you know, animals that have a job and a purpose to serve us. Too many people don't see them as sitting at beans. They see them as, well, these animals are not the same as a cat and dog. They have a job to do. And, you know, we still have rodeos, which you know, I've had to go to some when I was a fire inspector and I felt really bad for the, the horses because they were forced to run through pyro and, and you could tell they were used to it, but there was not a lot of joy in these horses. Um, and so, but on the other extreme, we have, you know, the animal, the horses that are used for therapy for children who are autistic or for veterans, how, you know, the horses really help them through all the emotional baggage and junk that they're dealing with. So it's kind of been, you know, it's just such a, a love hate almost. I don't think those are the right words, but, you know, on one side, we have the people who are helping the animals and, uh, you know, see them as sentient beings. We have BLM who rounds all the wild Mustangs up here off the desert. And then you have, you know, it's, they're treated pretty roughly through that roundup. And a lot of them don't make it just because they use helicopters and scare them. And yet you have all the advocates who are out there fighting for them. So there's really this dynamic um, happening with horses that you know, maybe we're becoming aware, but there's still so much work to do to help them. Absolutely. And it's, and, you know, with our practice, like I said, that we could do this, you know, um, distantly, you don't have to be around horses in order to support them. You can do this distantly, find a rescue. I, I really encourage you to go visit Return to Freedom. I think it's returntofreedom.com and listen to some of the stories, uh, listen to the you know, stories about her horse. I don't know if you all remember the cartoon about Spirit the horse. That was one of um, Return to Freedom's horses. It was a story about that horse. So it's a really wonderful organization. But what I want to talk to you about today is more how horses can be our teachers and can help us heal and can help us with our classes. They can help us in so many different ways. And so I want to share a couple stories about um about how horses are so intuitive and they're so, they so badly want to help us. So I used to teach, I was so blessed that I learned to practice and teach at Pregnant Mare Rescue in Aptus, California. And there was this one horse, Whiskey. He was, he was the patriarch of the, of the place, right? He was in charge of everybody. He'd get so excited if somebody came in, he had to put everybody in their place because he was the leader. And he was very friendly though. Um, he was a good horse. He didn't bite. He didn't nip, didn't kick, you know, so he was a great horse for my classes to say, yeah, go in with whiskey. Right. So I had a student, she didn't have any horse experience. No problem. Um, I know that whiskey's a friendly horse. If I didn't know whiskey was a friendly horse, I wouldn't have sent her in there. I said, you know, just don't ever turn your back on a horse. And so this is something for all of you too. If you're going to ever be working around horses, you don't have that much experience. Don't ever turn your back on a horse. And the reason for that being is they can turn around, they can bite you and you won't see it. And when they bite, they bite, they bite hard. Um, so I said, you know, whatever you do, you can be around the horse, be, keep towards the front, but don't change your back. So she's, okay, yeah, yeah. So we do the meditation, we come out and her face is kind of white and she's like looking kind of like, oh my God. And I say, what's wrong? She said, whiskey bit me. I'm like, oh my God, that, and so I'm freaking out because shit this is my class I told her whiskey doesn't bite and I so I started talking to her he bit you and she goes yeah right back here and I said oh okay that's weird I said did you turn your back 
And she said, yeah. I go, oh. I said, did he bite you hard? She's like, no, he just like pinched me with his teeth. He just went, pink. I went, oh. In the meantime, we're standing at the fence and Whiskey's coming over and he's trying to kiss her head and she's like scared. And I'm like, no, he's trying to kiss your head. He's trying to apologize for nipping you. I said, he nipped you because you turned your back. He heard me tell you, don't turn your back because it's Whiskey. You're not going to get hurt from Whiskey. But another horse could have taken a huge chunk out of her. I mean, it it hurts when a horse bites you. You could get really badly hurt. And mm-hmm. so I was like, ah, okay. Another time when I needed a horse to teach, uh, one of my students, uh, Lorraine, she had a couple horses that were in a pasture by her house. And she wanted to learn how to work with horses. And so I told her, you know, we always stand outside the fence. You know, if you don't, it's a horse you don't know or a horse. You don't know the owner so that you could say, hey, could I work with your horse? So she'd stand outside the fence. And I said, you know, and I walked her through all the different steps of how we just go inward, blah, 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 right? And I said, if this were a friendly horse, if it were your horse, you could do hands-on. And so the horse was a black and white paint. His name was Oreo, super sweet horse. And so I was showing her and he was, he came really close to the fence so we could touch him and he tolerated touch. Something horses will do when they don't like your touch is they'll flick you off like they would a fly, right? So they're going to quiver their skin. Like that's their little sign to, hey, get get off me. And it's a nice sign. It's a polite sign, right? A very rude sign is, so their horse, their ears are like this. When their ears start to go back, like they can be up, 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 but they start to go back, 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 pinned back. That means they're mad. That means get out, get away from them. They're telling you to get out of their space. They might cock their leg. They're telling you a clear warning sign, but Oreo was really super friendly. So he's standing there and I said, well, if he he tolerates it, you could put your hand right here, like on his neck, right? And so we did. And I said, now, if we were gonna do, like if he tolerated hands and he wanted it and you wanna do like a a full body touching him, we would do this. And so I was showing her and I said, you know, you just put your hands lightly and you go down his body. Well, every time my hands started to go down, he'd flick me off. He wouldn't flick her off. He was totally still, but where my hands were, he was doing these little flicks, like get off of me. And so I'm like, okay, fine. So then he tolerated her going down. He's like, I'm going to be the teacher. And then she got to the very end. She goes, now what do I do? And I said, well, if they really want it, they might turn around or you could go around to the other side. And he flipped around and he let her do the whole thing. And I thought, well, I'm not going to see if I could put my hands. The minute I put my hands, flick, flick, get off of me. And so she did the whole thing. And then at the end, we said, Oreo, thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for being a teacher. And he like whinnied and he ran off. And it's Mm -hmm. like, Kelly can attest to this too. When you go to England, it's so funny that the horses, they know, they understand they are the teachers. We are the students. They are the teachers. And we always, when we go work in the let animals lead method, we always say to horses, to animals, to cats, cats, whatever that is, whatever being that is, you know, I, I'm here to share energy. I'm here to support you. And hopefully you'll support me too, or hopefully you'll help me with meditation. You'll help me as well. And when we were out at Remus one time, this was really, really interesting. Um, I have so many stories out there, but I'll tell you one that it was really different. We were going to a pasture and they have these huge pastures, you know, they're like an acre at least for some of these pastures. And there was horses out there and two of the horses, Dolly and I think Tosca came up to the front and they were at the gate. And so we're like, oh, okay, you know, and they knew we were coming in cause they know us well. I mean, we've been going there for seven or eight years. And so open up the gate, they come and they walk us to the herd. And so we all go, we do our meditations out there. You're kind of spread out. You're just out in the pasture cause the horses are all very sweet. And we do our meditation and the horses go deep and it's really beautiful. And then we go, okay, everyone, you know, it's time to end. And we start walking back. Well, here comes Dolly and Tosca. And they walk us all the way back to the gate. They let us open the gate. And they stand there with their little heads over. They kind of snicker and whinny. But, and it was just so cute because it's like they understand. But they're also showing us, you're coming into our house, right? You're coming into our space. And there's a, a level of respect that has to be shown to horses when you go into their space. So another time at Remus, we went in with the gypsy horses. The gypsy horses are like halflings. So they're they're stocky, like draft horses, but they're they're halflings. They're just uh, half the size. 
and they'd never been ridden, never been trained. Well, we went out there and the, and I think it was Mia was the head horse and she was pissed. She had her ears pinned back and she came up to us and was like, not in my house, right? Because we just decided, okay, we're going to spread out. And so she came up to each of us with her ears back and would push us back further, 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 further back. And as we started to all go back, her ears started to come up. It wasn't that she didn't want us in there. It's you're being rude. This is my herd. You're not paying attention. You're not respecting my herd and our boundaries. You're coming in. And it doesn't matter that we're coming in to share this beautiful space and meditation with them. We're mm -hmm. coming in and we're imposing on their space. And I think with animals, it's really easy to lose that, pers that perspective that the, you're coming up into their space. They might not be ready for you. They may not want you. And I mean, like if you were sitting there, like I'm sitting in my car, somebody comes into my car and sits next to me. Wait a minute. Whoa, get back. You know, you got to get, wait a second. I don't know who you are. Let me get to know you. And let me figure out if I do want you near me. So it was really wonderful that Mia did that because it was a re really good reminder that we're coming into their space. We aren't, um, you know, we aren't the supreme being. This isn't our house. It's their house. And they have such little to themselves, right? We humans have everything. So we need to show them that respect. And so when you go to work with horses, if you do go out in the pasture, you always create that level of respect. You go in slowly. Maybe you keep your head down, your eyes down, and you come in with a very soft walk, a very soft glaze, and you kind of step back. And then if the horse comes towards you, you can walk a little bit towards them. So there's a mirroring with horses. But if the horse steps back or the horse turns, then you step back, right? You have to mirror that. You have to give them. They'll show you. Animals always show us what they want, what they need. But are we really listening? Had we not been listening to those little halfling horses, they really could have hurt us. Um, another experience I had with them, which was really beautiful was, and another teachable moment was we were all at the, the gate. Cause after that we realized, yeah, maybe we shouldn't go in with the halflings because they aren't trained. We didn't have helmets on. So it's like, yeah, we'll stay outside. So we were outside the fence and I told the group, I was with six people. I said, okay, you know, don't focus on the horses, go inward. Um, just let them be and they'll come up to you, you know, just shine your light basically, right? Just like we teach shine your light. So I turned my back because Essex, it's beautiful out there. It's just wide, expansive. It's out in the countryside. It's rolling hills. It is just gorgeous out there. So I am in my meditation and I'm just in that space and I'm like, okay, 15 minutes has gone by. I turn around and all of the horses or six of them are lined up behind me. And so when I, I went back to the class, I'm like, hey, so what happened? And they're like, I don't know. My meditation. I go, well, did you sit there and go, I hope the horse comes up to me. Please come up to me. And they're, and they're all like, yeah. I'm like, okay, see, I just ignored them. I just went into that space. But what I was doing was I was meditating. I'm connecting to that place within me that's love and light. I'm connecting to this beautiful environment. And of course, I'm connecting to them, but not consciously. They're just a part of this beautiful space. And now that that's what they want to connect to. That neediness that we have when we come to these animals is too much sometimes. So it's like, where do you want? Do you want someone who's like, come to me, come to me, come to me. Or someone who's just like exuding this beautiful energy and you go, you know, I'm just going to sit there and be with that and sit in that space, right? So I know I've shared a lot, Jamie, I, I'll turn that over to you. And because I know you have a lot of experiences as well. Right. Um, yeah. You know, the horses that are at the sanctuary I go to are pretty used to people. And I always go into the pasture with them um, and take students because they're used to us. Uh, and one time I did, and there's a red horse there who a lot of times he just would kind of stand back. This time he decided he was going to come and my student hadn't been around horses, but he came right up and plastered himself against me. And I kind of had to give him hands on just so I had a little bit of space and he wasn't moving. And so I could kind of see her and there was another horse and it would come up to her and then she would put her hand out and then it would take off and, you know, go and walk away. And it, that happened about three or four times. And finally, you know, I was like peeking around this big horse and I said, just 
just keep your hands down. Don't try to touch him. Just don't try to touch him. Just let her do what she's going to do. And so finally, she stopped reaching out as the horse would approach. And the horse went and laid down about 10 feet in front of her. And I said, so that's the way, you know, she wants to accept this. Um, and so, but the whole time for like, that was about 45 minutes, that whole session for the horse to lay down and this big red horse that just wasn't going to move. It's like, I know who you are and I'm just here. It's for me this time. And finally, then it moved away. Um, and also the little ponies are in the field with them. And so a little black Jack would come up and kind of, she, she, by then she was just keeping her hands down and Black Jack would come up and put his nose right there. And then eventually he went to the back pasture and he was rolling in the dirt and some of the donkeys came up. And so there was a lot of movement out in the pasture um, from all the different horses, except for the big red one who decided that he was gonna get my attention. And then the black one that laid down and then the little ones, the donkeys and, you know, the little ponies, they were just moving in and out of this energy. And it was just really beautiful the way, you know, they put me out of the picture. I was not going to be able to instruct her or do anything. It's like, okay, you know, you're staying here and we've got this covered. We will help her. I love that because yeah. it also shows too, it's like, there's also movement. You know, sometimes yeah. we think we're going to be offering this space and they're going to immediately be quiet. They're going to immediately go into that, you know, um, relaxed state. And sometimes they don't. Sometimes they keep eating. Sometimes they go roll around the place. Sometimes they lay flat out like the red horse did. Yeah. But it's it's knowing that our we're like the sun and we are shining, right? And so that beautiful energy of the sun, it's just like the energy within us, it just shines. And so they can take that and accept it however they want. I, so I don't know if you wanted to share anything more on that, Jamie. Uh, you know, just that, you know, that's really the truth. The horses will help us and they do move. And especially for a horse, they're used to running, they're used to being free, right? That's, so movement is really important. And one thing I was told by a horsewoman, um, that when you approach a horse, like straight on, they can't see you because yeah. their eyes, they're prey. So their eyes are on the side. So when you approach a horse, make sure it's kind of at an angle so that they can see you coming. Or like when we want to touch them, you know, and we put our hands on their head and you're going at yeah. them like this, they can't see that. And it's scary for them. So we need to keep in mind just the physicalness of them as well and be mm -hmm. respectful. Yeah. And I think that that's the hands thing too, is a big deal with horses because a lot of times horses are like, you know, hands are the, the issue with their trauma because they've either been beat or trained, you know, it's, it's human hands. So we don't want to, um, we don't ever want to come at them with hands. So Kelly, I, I want to turn it over to you because I know you have some interesting stories to share as well. Thanks, Leah and Jamie. Uh, yeah, I actually I have quite a few. I, uh, years ago, one of the first shelters that um, joined Sarah was the Hooked Animal Sanctuary in Vermont here. And um, unfortunately, over COVID, they, um, they didn't have enough funding to continue. But I, I spent a lot of time up there in the beginning, so I was able to be with the horses quite a bit. And um, early on in my teaching, the place was huge. It was really huge, a lot of different fields, but they were spread out. And uh, so I had everybody, it was okay, according to the owner of the, of the sanctuary that we could go to different um, areas. And one of my students was out in the field. And there were a couple of them at different fields. So, um, so I was kind of wandering around, making sure everybody was doing okay. And one of the women, I, first I see her sitting on the ground and I'm like, uh, you gotta get up, you know, get up. Don't ever be on the ground with a big horse in the field with you, right? So she got up and um, and then a little later came over to me and said, the horse bit me. And she pulled up her t-shirt and she had a bite mark on her stomach. And I, I never, I can't remember now what it was that was happening at the time, but I remember, um, you know, just being shocked. First of all, something 
you know, it was just not, um, I hadn't really considered it really. It was new, you know, new teaching with horses and, or around horses. And um, so it was a really good lesson. I immediately, you know, created um, similar to what we have in our manuals, uh, a release form and, and do that with all my classes. Um, even with, you know, shelter animals where a lot of times we're not in with them, but but just to let people know that we're not, you know, these are big animals that were around. We're at the the farm sanctuary. We have cows too, and and the goats can be fresh. Um, so you know, we have to be aware of, you know, you know, thinking about those kinds of things, which I really hadn't. And so it was a good learning opportunity for me um, to keep that part, you know, keep that. Um, um, you know, let my students know, be aware that sometimes it can be dangerous. So you have to protect yourself and be careful. So we stopped yeah. going in with them. Um, yeah. and, you know, some of them, unless we're, we're all together. Um, but I had also uh, an experience with um, some horses who are right out. They just went out the barn and were in a little paddock and, and I was assured they were fine. And I'd been around them before. And um, so we were, and, and at the same time, there were two rescues that were new. They had been in a hoarding situation and they were new to the farm. And um, and the woman had told me, you know, you can't you can't go in with them and they probably won't even come near you because they're traumatized. You know, so so we had some um, we were doing Reju in the paddock and the horses weren't nearby. And there were three or four students in chairs. And so I was going to each student. Um, and doing the reju and the horse the two horses that were in with us came over and one of the horses every time i had my hands like this over somebody's crown was putting their their nose right over my hand and i'd move and they'd do it again and i'd move and they'd do it again so it's like the the horse was you know involved in their reju you know receiving the energy uh, and then when it was over i looked up and the two horses that were way in the back pasture had come up along the fence and we're just standing there watching. So that was really cool. I um, love that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a really special moment. And um, and one of my, I got some, a, a cute little video of, I think I gave it to Sarah at one point, it was actually a slideshow. Uh, one of my students was down by the this fence and there was a pregnant mare up on the hill. And so I was just taking pictures. And when I put them all together, the, you could see the mayor was like, looked at Lisa, just started moving and made a beeline right down to her and stood in front of her. So that was, that was really cool to watch too. She was quite far away. Um, and, um, and then the other one about safety is that uh, early on when I, I didn't have much experience at all with horse working with horses and um, my neighbor uh, in town has a few horses and uh so she said, yeah, it'd be nice. You can come over and practice and they're fine. This one's fine. You can go in with her. So, um, so I, it's a little paddock off the barn. I went in and, um, and so I could see the first day she was like back from me and, um, and the far end of the paddock and she just was eating. And then she'd kind of look at me and she'd eat some more and, and look at me. And I could see her ear kind of turning towards me, even though she looked like she was not paying attention. And then, um, and then the next day, so I did like four in a row. So the next day I came back and she came a little closer, but still, you know, pretending like she was ignoring me while completely interested in what was happening. And then I think the third day I, I was there, she just came running at me and, you know, I was like, this is, a, you know, I just, you know, oh my God, this is a bad idea to be in here. And she stopped right in front of me. And then just grazed in front of me, and um, and then she um, she looked like she would be okay to be touched. So I reached out, and then she backed off. So just like we do, I backed off, and um, and then the last day she actually was just you know hanging out with me. She got into the place where she liked to untie my shoes, <laughs> and so she <laughs> pulled the laces on my shoes, um, and she let me touch her a little, but you know, she was more like um, you know just a little here, a little there. Um, did turn her body around too. So that was really cool. But, but, um, but that was, you know, I think for me, the the biggest lessons that I've gotten from the horses is the safety issue and to make sure that I'm safe and that my students are safe and that, you know, it is a movable practice. So if I'm somewhere where I feel like I'm not safe, I can certainly move and it's not going to really affect. I mean, I used to, originally, when I first started practicing, I thought, 
once I move my energy or once I move my, my body, all the energy is going to move to a different area. <laughs> that was my, you know, that was like, I had this big bubble around me and me and the whole bubble would move and the horse would be like, what happened? But, <laughs> but now I know it's not like that. And, and, um, and it's really, it is really beautiful when you can just stand there. I remember a lot of the times at Remus where like one of the times we went in with all the horses, the whole group, and they all just went way down the other end of the field. But once everybody picked a spot and got really quiet one by one, they started coming up yeah. and going to everybody. And it was just really beautiful to watch the, you know, the way they scattered. And then, you know, you know initially you would think they're never going to come to us, but then in the end, because we all got so quiet, it was beautiful, but that's, I think you're so right, Leah, about the, I don't, you know, I'm, I want the horse to come to me. I want the horse to come to me. Please come to me kind of thing. And, and so we're doing the, um, the shine your light meditation. When we did that, when I, I do it all the time in pairs when we're at the farms, because animals really do well with that because they're, fo we're focused on so, each other. So the shine your light, basically, for those of you who don't know, and welcome, Linda. So glad you could be here. It's just, um, you're basically keeping your hands off your body. You go to your Hara. And then you bring that energy up to your heart and then you bring the energy up to your third eye um, and back down again. And, but your focus is all here, right? With your hands and in your body. And so go ahead. Sorry, Kelly. So when we practice with each did in pairs, we can do that one in pairs. Mm -hmm. um, then I saw that the animals really responded because they're not being focused on. You right. know, we're focusing on each other at all this beautiful energy is flowing. And so they can be like, oh, now I want to see what that's about. But if you're going to stare right. at me and you're going to like, you know, keep feeling like you're projecting towards me, then yeah, I don't want any of that. Exactly. So I think like as a recap, just so for those of you who just joined too, and those, when you're working with horses, if you don't know a horse is always stay outside the fence, right? Keep yourself safe. Don't ever go in with a horse you don't know. Um, even if you do know the horse, if the horse has any history of getting spooked, of getting, of nipping, biting, um, anything, uh, stay outside. And really as a, just a safety um, practice, I would always stay outside the fence because the horse can come up, you can put your hands out, they'll turn their body, just like the story with Oreo. We were on the other side of the fence. Oreo still got exactly what Oreo needed. It was on Oreo's terms. So you don't have to go in. But then if you do go in, like Kelly said, you know, just make sure that you don't go in with an agenda that you go in and you focus inward. Um, it's like Jamie was saying, there should there might be movement, right? So don't think that the horses, because they're moving or because they're eating, that they aren't supporting you, that they aren't connecting with you, and that they aren't enjoying what you're sharing with them. And we are like the sun, so we're focused on just that inner light and shining it out. Um, another thing that the horses seem to like is chanting. So if you take the level two or you do the animal Reiki for Reiki practitioners class, the horses really love chanting. Um, so we'll, I'll share a little bit about that. But before I do, so we'll, you know, that's another thing you can do is chant to help yourself stay inward. Chanting has been really effective. If you don't know chanting, use the green Tara that we shared, I think last week or the week before. So you can go on to our past YouTubes. Um, you can listen to the green Tara chant. It's really beautiful. And that's something you can do. I went to one horse rescue, it was very small. There were only six horses. One of the horses, Destiny, she was the matriarch. Uh, they were supposed to put Destiny down because she had tried to kill somebody. She was really violent. She didn't like to be ridden. Um, she would attack people. So they were going to put her down. And Sam, um, the, the man who had these horses, he, she was his first. And so he got to know her better and she became a really sweet, nice horse. And so he got six or five others. And he had this really beautiful property, but he was very private. It took me forever to get in to see Sam. And when I did finally get in to see Sam, he had a racehorse, Will, who had been cribbing. And that what that means is they bite the fence. They chew the fence, which is really bad for their teeth. It's bad for their digestion because they're eating the wood, right? And so he was worried about him. So he decided to open up to me. Um, one of my good friends, Shelby, was his best friend. And so that's how he knew about me. So when I got there, I told him a little bit, you know, it's meditation based. We don't do hands on. And this was years ago. This was like probably in 2010 or 11. It was a long time ago. Um, and even way back then, we, it was all meditation based, right? 
And so I sat outside of Will's stall. It was an outside stall, it was a little stall. And I turned my back on Will and I just started meditating. And he said, well, aren't you going to go in with him? And I said, no. And he said, why? And I said, because I don't need to. I don't need to go in there. I'm just going to meditate. My energy is going to be balanced. And he's either going to accept and join me or he's not. And that's totally fine. It's up to him. And he went, wow. So he sat there and watched what happened. And Will had been cribbing. And then he stopped. And he started to hang his head. He started to get relaxed. And then Sam said, I can't believe you didn't go in with him. And this is how he's responding. And I said, but that's our practice. We don't force anything. It's completely up to the animal to join us or not. And that choice is empowering for them. So I was really grateful that I was able to practice at that rescue for at least a year or two more. It got, they they disbanded, they moved to a different location and I couldn't go anymore. But what it was really wonderful to go there. Those horses taught me so much, especially destiny. Um, and going into the chanting, one time I was teaching the chanting, they were, I taught them level one. They were so, they loved what was happening with the horses so much. They wanted to learn level one. I taught them level one and level two. We were doing the chanting and we were in a circle, but we were out with the horses where the horses come, but we had chairs and we're in the circle. And so I'm walking them through a meditation and all of a sudden destiny, she's a big Appaloosa. She steps over my legs. And so her stomach is right here in my face and her legs are on each side of mine. And she's just standing there. I'm like, okay. So I'm like trying to tell them and then we're doing the chanting or chanting and she's standing there the whole time. And then when it's done, she stepped over me. I walked over and, and uh, I said, God, that was so weird destiny. Cause they had their eyes closed. And they said, well, we were wondering why your voice got so muffled. She just was really, she wanted, she knew what was going to happen. She knew what she wanted. She wanted to be right there. She's the matriarch, not me. She's the teacher, not me. And she was like reminding them that, yes, even though she is talking, I'm the one holding space for all of you. And she did. And it was beautiful. And it was, it was such a great experience. But the reason I share that is that that's another tip that when you go into a place, you approach a rescue you know, you let them know that you don't need to touch their horses. You don't even need to be in with their horses. You can be on the other side of the fence and it's just as powerful. And that helps them to feel secure because just like dog rescues and cat rescues, they are really leery about opening up their rescue to strangers. Horse rescues are even more so because horses get skittish. A lot of times they're traumatized, deeply traumatized. So hands are weapons. Um, and so it, when we can show them that we come with just this meditative practice and it's something that the horses really love and we have tons of experience. That's why being a part of Sarah is so important because when you're a part of Sarah, you have thousands of people that have done this practice all over the world. And we have rescues, horse rescues, all kinds of different rescues that know our, our, our methods and support our methods. So it's really important that, you know, when you're going somewhere, you're not alone, right? To realize, hey, I'm not alone. I've got Sarah behind me. I've got this whole community. Or if you're part of Kathleen's Animal Reiki Source community, you know, if, even if you're not a part of Sarah, also that community, Kathleen's been doing this since 2004, right? So these practices are tried and true. And it's why our methods work so well is because they're meditative based. We don't force anything on the animal and we always allow respect to happen. So when you're working with horses, that's really, really important too, because you can get hurt if you're not careful about that. And then one more thing about chanting that I want to turn it over to all of you is that horses love chanting. It's really amazing. I know that Kelly's been at Remus when, like I said, the, the, the pastures are at least half an acre wide on some. And we've been doing a walking meditation where we're chanting and the horses will literally come stampeding over to where we are and just stop. And they just listen to that chanting. Or, you know, another time, um, I know with Gabby, we went to Pregnant Mare just recently and we were doing chanting and the horses were just loving it. Now we did one chant and it kind of stimulated them. They had been there, we were there about half an hour and they were all quiet. And then we did change to a different chant. It was the Abhi Ra Unken, which is the element chant. And they got a little bit, oh, 
And the lead mare, she got everybody, she woke everybody up. She got him out of there and she's like, come on, it's time to move. And so they started moving around and they started to get a little more happy and frisky. And it was really interesting, the difference in their tone, but it was just a really wonderful gift to give them to like sit there in that meditative space. They all relax. And then we do this chant and all of a sudden they're like, oh, and what's really interesting about the Abhi Ra and Ken, um, Ken chant is it is, it like makes you feel really like clear and open. Um, it's actually like a path to enlightenment, but um, so Linda says, thank you all so much. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Linda. We're glad you could be here. So I want to open it up to all of you. If you have something to say, just put your hand up like this so I can call on you. Um, you can unmute too. Olive, yes. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, this is, I work with horses, as you probably know, yeah. and um, I love the safety tips because it's absolutely true. Let me reinforce that. The other thing is I have never really tried um, chanting. I love this idea of, with the horses. I do sing to my dogs. I have some little mantras that I do that I sing to dogs, but I have never tried this with a horse. So uh, what, what chance would you recommend that you've tried that? Oh. The horses, I don't know anything about what you all are doing with chanting. We we do so in the level two you learn um the chants for chokure, oh, yeah. and honchazation and so we do those. Um there's also the green tara chant, which is um oh gosh. On gosh, Kelly, do you know on tare, tutare, tore, soha? Um and so we have a if you go to our Facebook or our YouTube, you'll see that there's a link to a recording of that and there's also a link to a pdf of that so you could do that one you can also sing your affirmations what okay. what they're really responding to is not so much the chanting they're responding to the energy that we're creating so right so when we chant we're really kind of clearing our body right like a bell it's right. like vibrating and all that stuff is going out yeah. and so they're responding to us becoming clearer more balanced more grounded more open within ourselves so if the singing of the mantras makes you happy the affirmation yeah. Yeah. then go and sing and see how they respond because it's okay. not like they're responding to some magic that we're creating with this chanting that's not yeah. what's happening they're responding to our energy mm -hmm. that we so so it's just like if your energy is off when you're chanting then they might be like nah, no the, you know because it's it's not it's like you hear somebody singing off key and you're like mm, that's yeah. not very relaxing <laughs> sometimes with the chanting that's how we are because we don't feel comfortable so our like lack of comfort can sometimes come across as like ah. so yeah but thank you so much for adding that because yeah it's horses are amazing and i i want if you do that do come back and let us know how the singing goes I, i'm going to so check much. out your oh, yeah. uh, youtube yeah. Uh, I'm going to check out your YouTube and the chants that you use and practicing. I love singing. So singing yeah. to horses sounds like a wonderful thing to me. I, oh, I absolutely. Wonder, I will get back to you on that. And thank you so much. Well, thank you, Olive. Thank you so much for joining us. So is there anyone else that wants to say something, share something um, that's happened for them? Yeah, Cherise. Hey, Cherise. So good to see you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to say something, and this is nothing about Reiki. It's just because this topic is very important to me. Uh, I teach a class on um, animal law. It's a graduate level course on rules and regulations of animal law. And through that, over the years, I've gotten involved with horse rescues and therapy horses and people who, like you had said at the beginning, who take on horses or work with veterans and children and whatnot. And there's just no regulation across the states. So I just want to say that, you know, I think it's, we're so necessary because so many of these places that do therapy horse work, they're not trained therapists and they're not trained yeah. horse behaviorists. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been to both. I've been to the exceptional, the opponent quest version in Arizona. And I've yeah. been to yeah. those that are local to me that, you know, yeah, okay. They do it, but they don't really get it. And that can be even more dangerous. And these are rescue horses that are going through, you know, just because they're responding doesn't mean they're responding well. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to talk about, thank you so much for that, because we're going to talk about that next week, the difference between acceptance and submission. Because there is a huge difference, and I'm so glad you brought that up. Because if you read, if you just Google horses, Kathleen Prasad, um, and Reiki, right? You'll get the article that she wrote about her experience in Sacramento, where they were actually ex, some of them were ex therapy horses that had not been treated well. And they were really, really shut down. And somebody went in there with hands on Reiki, like, I'm going to fix you, right? Because that's our mindset when we're doing hands on. I'm the healer, you're broken, I'm going to fix you. And the horses chased her off. So the owner told Kathleen, well, you know, they may or may not be open to you. And she said, well, we don't go in and we don't do hands. So let's just see. And the horses completely opened up. And not only did they open up after Kathleen's group left, they were like running around and bucking and rolling on the ground. And she was just like in the video, you can hear, and there's a link to the video in that article. You can hear her saying, who's the old men? Who's the old men? Because these are just old, broken down horses, right? And here they are acting like young geldings. They're just running around having a great time. So there, it's such a gift what we can give these beautiful beings that do so much for us humans. And I'm so grateful to Sharice for bringing that up because we can't put little blinders on and go, oh, they're therapy horses. They're treated well. No, um, even in rescue, you got to be careful. There's hoarders in rescues. Um, I've been around a rescue where she had 14 horses on one acre of land. That's hoarding. That's not good for the horses. It's not good for their mental state. So, you know, just always making sure though, that when we go into those places, we see these situations, we stay in the light. We stay positive knowing that something will shift. And even for that woman that was hoarding with 14, something did shift. Um, we were sending her Reiki all the time. Something did shift. She got bigger property. Things had started happening. So you know, don't get stuck in that. Oh my gosh, this is so bad. Things change. So Gabby, I know you had your hand up. Love to hear from you. No, I agree with what Caris, uh, Caris was saying. Uh -huh. uh, Teresa, uh, huh? And in Hollister, I was helping an acquaintance of mine who happened to be having cancer. And she told me that she had a place for therapy for horses. So I was helping her. She had cancer. So I would go and do the feed and bring the 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 bills of hay and everything. But then one day she went and and I saw her do it. And I asked her, well, what kind of training do you do? And she was asking me like, can you help me do a nonprofit? Can you help me do this? And I was so ex so excited. But once I saw, I mean, I didn't have any knowledge back then of Reiki whatsoever. I just was familiar. I grew up familiar with horses. But once I saw that, I felt like. I can't help this woman because she doesn't know what she's doing. And yeah. she, you know, just because you put a child that is in special needs and the, and they have a connection, it doesn't qualify you as a therapy because a uh, the therapist, because she was not even a, a therapist per se for right. children and right. at the horses. So I was just like, so it was a really uncomfortable position for me because um, it's like, you, you want to help? But I didn't see that everything was there. And I felt that this person just wanted to get like, ooh, nonprofit, let's make it and let's get some bucks. I'm like, no, 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 th that's not how it works. You know, I'm like, yeah. So it was, yeah. 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 And you have to look for that. And then, you know, but in that same vein too, when we realize, oh, okay, yeah, this is happening. That's when our distant practice really comes in handy and we can really help support the horses because you know, they're the ones that really need that support. They're the ones that need us to always be, to always be sending love and light. I know we're coming down. We've just got a couple more minutes left for questions, but does anyone else have something they want to share really quickly about horses? And even if it's not like what Cherie sent, um, not necessarily tied to Reiki, but still an important thing to share. So if anyone else has something else they'd like to say, no? Oh, Kelly. Yeah, Beth can talk about the trip oh, yeah. to our trip up to the horse rescue. Sure, the Beth. Mustang rescue. Do you want you want to do that, Beth? Me? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. So Beth got us connected to a, a new Mustang rescue in Vermont, and uh, she and Judy, uh, who's another Sarah member, and I went up and um and we had a great time. And that's you know that's all we did was stand outside on you know next to the fences or 
near the rings and stuff. And, um, and the people that, um, the woman that we were connecting with who runs the place was really pleased to hear that we didn't, you know, have to touch them or anything like that was surprised. Mm -hmm. And was, it was so funny because like even the chickens got quiet and, you know, (laughs) one horse was in front of Judy, then another horse came up in front of her. And, and then there was a whole string of mustangs running in the field. And we were, the three of us were spread out at the fence and, and um, it was really interesting to watch. I think I just talked about this recently there, the way, you know, a couple would come over and then they'd come and check us out and the others would be standing in the background watching the whole thing. And it was just really fascinating. And just to see the Mustangs running uh, free like that was just amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, they're such a beautiful animal. And, and that's another thing, you know, um, it's really, really beautiful when a horse accepts you or when you see that you're helping support a horse. When Gabby and I went out to pregnant mare, there was a horse that was older. He was very thin. It was, um, it was a sad situation. The owner had dementia and nobody knew that he wasn't feeding the horses properly until his daughter came and saw the two horses. And so she put them with pregnant mare, but sadly one of them died. So Will was sad because he lost his owner. He lost his partner horse and he was having a hard time acclimating to the herd. So you know, when we got there, Gabby went and she was meditating with him and he actually um, wanted hands on a little bit and she was with him. And then after their session, he got closer to the herd and and was in there, you know, being a part of that herd. So what we have, this beautiful gift, it's so passive, but yet it's really powerful because what do we do? One of the things that we do that no other practice does because they're focused too much on hands-on healing on healing what's outward is the emotional needs of the animal. And that is really where our power lies is we are helping animals emotional state. And we're not trying to fix or change them. We're just supporting them. So um, we're down to, oh yeah, Mary Lynn, really quickly, because we're I know uh, Jamie has a meditation she'd like to share. Okay. Go ahead. It will be very quick. Yeah. Um, I had an experience um a few months ago, speaking of the emotional needs with uh, a horse who um, whose mom said that he has uh, P- PTSD. Mm-hmm. And so he had not ever um, experienced um, Reiki and, um, and I hadn't ever with a horse. So uh, it turned out to be a very beautiful experience and uh, gradually, um, actually not gradually, but really quick, the second visit, I mean, he was loving me up. Um, And I learned from his mom just um, what his behavior meant toward me and the other horses in um, in the barn were really loving it too, loving the energy and showing they were whinnying. And so anyway, it was nice. I love that. Thank you so much. Cause that's just another reminder um, that we just, when we let go and just be that light and allow them that space, they really reward us, right? Because we're needy, we're human, we have our egos, we want them to love us, right? We go in there, come on, let's be honest. And so, but they, you know, if we're patient, they always reward us with that because they want that connection just as much as we do, but they want it on their terms. And that's what we have to respect, right? And so I'm gonna turn it over to Jamie for meditation. I would really appreciate it if we could dedicate this beautiful meditation that she's gonna lead us in to the horses um, and to any other animals or beings that need our support, but really like let's focus on these horses and all that they give to us and give them so much gratitude. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Jamie. Okay. Um, And so I've been moving around. I have yard guys, so I'm in the bedroom. I think we're quiet. Hopefully they will all stay quiet for the meditation. So if we wanna just sit and get comfortable with our spine straight, but not stiff. And go ahead and close your eyes and take a couple of slow, deep breaths in and out, 
just to release any tension from the day. And now go ahead and bring your hands in gasso or the prayer position. And let's dedicate the energy and the space that we are about to create, the love, the light to all the horses, whether they're in rescue, in a home, in the wild, all those horses and animals that need support. And now go ahead and place your hands in your lap, palms up, palms down, whatever's comfortable for you. And let's begin by taking a slow, deep breath in through our nose. Pull it all the way down to the belly where it ignites this beautiful light that resides inside of us. And then as you exhale out, exhale out this light through your skin, your hands, into the space around you. Take another slow, deep breath in, pulling it all the way down to the belly. It's igniting that light, and that light is growing brighter and larger as you exhale it out into the space around you. Take another breath in, pulling it down to the belly, igniting that light, and your whole body is being illuminated from this light as you exhale it out into the space around you. Take another breath in, pull it all the way down, illuminating that light. That light is so bright. You are becoming a being of light as you exhale it out, back out into the universe. Let's do one more deep breath. Pull it all the way down, really ignite that light. Feel your whole body glowing with this light, this universal light, and then exhale it out. Now allow your breath to find a natural rhythm and just sit in the space that you've created. Feel your body just feel light and bright and illuminated. Every cell is glowing. And the space around you is full of light. And just put your focus on your heart center now. And feel this beautiful light fill your heart center. And it just grows larger and larger in your heart center. And you feel love and compassion for these magnificent animals until your heart center can't even hold it anymore and it opens like a flower blooms and this beautiful, compassionate, loving light shines outward. And you can bring to mind horses in general, maybe a horse you know. Just bring to mind, think of the horses, the beautiful wild horses, the horses in sanctuaries any horse at all, just bring them to mind now and hold space for them. And in this beautiful light, you see them as being healthy. You see them as being free. You see them as being the powerful, magnificent beings they are. You see them as our teachers. You see them as being happy and joyful. Now just hold that space for a moment, holding them in this beautiful light of love and compassion and joy. And feel them embracing this light and sending back to you the energy they're sending back to you, the strength, the wisdom that they share with us.
And now go ahead and bring your hands back into Gaso. Thank whoever showed up and thank the horses for whatever they offered to you. Thank them for participating with you in this meditation. And know that you can hold this space for them as you go throughout the day. You don't have to be in meditation. And you can take their gifts with you. The wisdom, the strength, the freedom. Take that with you as you go today throughout your business. And hold that space of love and light and compassion for them. And now take a slow, deep, cleansing breath in all the way down to the belly, just to revitalize your body, bring you back into the space. You can wiggle your toes and fingers, roll your shoulders. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Thank you so much, Jamie. That was beautiful. And thank you all for being here today and supporting Everyone. the beauty of these horses. I just love that so much. And I love that dedication to them. Thank you so much, Jamie. And you're right. And we could focus on their wisdom, their strength, their freedom, right? There's nothing better than seeing a horse run free. Yes. So I hope you all will at least go visit a horse rescue site today. There's Pregnant Mare Rescue. There's Return to Freedom. There's Remus Horse Memorial. And Ask there's so many. Find your favorite one and maybe go on their social media. Just give them some support and some love. Okay. And if you can donate, great. But even, you know, our love, our light, and just a kind word is always free. All right, everyone. Thank you. Mwah, thank, thank you for everyone. being here. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, uh -huh. Leah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, uh, thanks, Jamie. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Bye. week. Yeah, you too. So great seeing you. Have a great week. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.